Well, well done for making it so far, and we're into our third lesson on the movement of substances. And in this one, we're going to be talking about active transport. Now, you might remember that both diffusion and osmosis were passive processes. Remember what that means? It means that they both don't require any additional energy. And that's because they both involve moving substances from a region of high concentration or high water potential to a region of low concentration or low water potential. But things aren't always that simple. You know, sometimes you need to move substances from low concentration to high concentration. Now, how are you going to do that? The answer is active transport, which requires energy. It's hard work, but you can actually uh, go from low concentration to high concentration. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. What is active transport and why is it important in plants and animals? In your textbook, there's just one page. Great. But you need to know it as a pure biology student. Now, in order to understand active transport, we need to revisit our dear old friend. Remember this? Yeah, he's the root hair cell. And remember that root hair cells absorb some mineral salts uh, by diffusion. And this was because the concentration of mineral salts was very high in the soil and very low inside the root hair cell. So there was a concentration gradient and the root hair cell can absorb the mineral salts by diffusion down the concentration gradient. This didn't require any energy. But what if the concentration of mineral salts in the soil is very low compared to the cell set of the root hair cell? Now the situation is reversed. How are we going to absorb the mineral salts if they are very, very low in their concentration in the soil? How can the root hair cell do this? So this is a situation again. The mineral salts have a very low concentration in the soil and a much higher concentration inside the root hair cell. So the concentration gradient is now in this direction. What will happen naturally? Right, there will be diffusion of the, of the mineral salts out of the cell into the soil. So our poor root hair cell here is going to lose his very precious mineral salts. That's very, very bad for him. But there is a way that you can continue to absorb mineral salts into the cell. And that is by active transport. Active transport uh, transports the salts against, against the concentration gradient. And this process requires energy. That's why it's active. Alright, so what is active transport? You might want to pause here and uh, absorb the definition into, your, into yourself, to your brain. Well, active transport is the movement of particles from a region of lower concentration right, to a region of higher concentration across a membrane. And it requires energy and it is movement against a concentration gradient, right, in this other direction. And this energy is produced through respiration. Remember where respiration takes place? What is the organelle that, uh, where respiration takes place? It starts with M. Right, it is our mitochondria. That is where respiration takes place. So take a bit of time to get this definition in your head. Okay, so active transport, an important point to note is that it only takes place in living organisms. Uh, that's because active transport requires energy and it requires respiration, right? That's where your energy comes from. And most of the time, it also requires oxygen. So these three things are required for active transport. And that's why active transport cannot take place in dead cells. And sometimes it doesn't take place when oxygen is absent. Okay, so in the absence of oxygen, active transport won't take place. All right, an important point to note is that active transport only takes place in living organisms. And that's because active transport requires energy. And energy comes from respiration. And in order to respire, most of the time you need oxygen. So these three things are needed for active transport to take place. 
And that's why it does not happen in cells that are dead. It does not happen when oxygen is absent. Well, usually it doesn't happen when oxygen is absent. I take note of that. Uh, we've seen an example of active transport in plants. Right, that is that root hair cells use active transport to absorb some mineral salts. How about animals? Well, the example in animals comes from the small intestine. In the small intestine, you'll find these cells called epithelial cells. You might remember them from our cells chapter. And they use active transport to transport some digested nutrients. For example, when glucose or when sugar has a very high concentration uh, in the small intestine and low inside the cells, it can be absorbed by diffusion. But after some time, or sometimes glucose has a very low concentration in the small intestine compared to inside the cell. But if the concentration is very low here, in order to absorb the glucose, the epithelial cells will use active transport. So that's how both diffusion and active transport is used to absorb digested nutrients in the small intestine. Alright, so now having gone through all three processes, I want you to do a summary task for me before our next lesson. Now I want you to compare and to contrast in the table these three processes, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. And I want you to draw out a little drawing uh, to, to show your understanding of each process. So what is diffusion like? Can you do it in a drawing? What's osmosis like? And I also want you to state what are the examples of each process in the living organisms that we've looked at. So most, uh, you need one example from plants, one example from animals. That's usually the best. Alright, so I look forward to seeing your summary table in class. See you.